Hi, this is Paul Mistmaker, and I'm going to give you a quick demo of how to contribute to the React Admin project. I will first go through a, a very, very brief overview of how to get it up and running locally, and then show the development workflow on how you can modify the source uh, and use it in your own apps and possibly even contribute to the project on GitHub. So the first thing I'm going to do is to do a normal create react app called test admin. That's going to take a minute to get going. So while that's installing, I will give you a an overview of how react admin works. React admin is a front end framework for building admin applications running in the browser on top of rest or graphql APIs. It uses ES6, uh, React, and Material Design. It used to be called Admin on REST, and it is open source and maintained by a company in France called Marmalab. Now that the Create React app has completed, I will go into the folder and then add in these additional dependencies. So we will use the at first, we'll use the basic React admin dependency that's published to NPM. And we will just start the server so that you can see there's nothing special about this Create React app. Great. So now that that is up and running, I am going to uh, open up this in IntelliJ IDEA. You can use VS Code or Notepad or whatever your IDE of choices, and inside app.js, I am going to import uh, admin from React admin, and get rid of all of this, and just put in admin. And I will also follow the instructions for uh, connecting to a simple REST API. So we will connect this here. And we will import JSON server provider. and get the admin data provider connected and see how this looks. Okay, so React Admin is configured and now let's do some very basic updates where we are going to put a resource in here that will connect. So first we need to import the list guesser and the resource. And what this will do is it will take the resource users and uh, connect it to this data provider. So it'll put slash users at the end. And the list guesser will try to take the payload that comes from the data provider and have it guess what columns exist. So you can see here that we, with just a few lines of code, now have a sortable uh, data grid with data that comes from an API. Um, you can even uh, try to have uh, different pages of data. All pretty easy. So if we want to add in another resource, we could add in posts. And now on the left here, you can see that there are uh, posts as well, users, posts. And there are a lot of other things that you can do as a developer to try to uh, to try and very quickly build out an admin area for your uh, for your own API. The rest of this video is going to be 
on if you want to contribute or change the actual underlying code to React Admin itself. So React Admin has a GitHub page where you can just uh, clone the repo locally. And it has some uh, contribution guidelines of how you can uh, build the uh, um, how you can build this into your app. These instructions uh, at the time of recording this video are not quite right, so I will show you how it can be done. So now that we have React Admin. Uh, React Admin, they use a make file, and in the make file you can see that we can do a make install, and what that will do is it will um, it will install all of the dependencies. So if I open up React Admin to inspect how the project is structured, you can see that this is a mono repo that has um, about a dozen different packages here. There is the main entry point, which is React Admin. And inside React Admin, you can see that it has uh, other dependencies on React Admin Core, React Admin Language English, React Admin UI, Material UI. And uh, going through doing a make install uh, will install all of the uh, dependencies using, I believe, Yarn workspaces inside the uh, the node modules directory in the root, in the root itself. <clears throat> um, you can also run a make build, and that will build each of the individual React admin packages one by one. And then at the end, you would be able to point locally to the uh, freshly built React admin uh, package. Um, there is also a, um, a couple sample apps um, that uh, have custom Webpack configurations. So one of the most challenging things that I've found in trying to contribute to React Admin is one, getting the build environment working, which is what I'm showing how to do, and then two, the iteration cycle is very long because this make uh, process is uh, takes about a minute on my uh, MacBook Pro with uh, uh, 64 gigs of RAM and a bunch of processes processors. So it is uh, it is not for the faint of heart. So what we can do is instead of waiting for the build, uh, we can uh, w waiting for the official production build. We can uh, go into the uh, uh, the demos directory, uh, the examples directory. And in examples, uh, you can see that there are uh, a few examples, data generator, demo, simple, and tutorial. So if I check out make again, I can do a, uh, a make run simple. And you'll see that this uh, runs the project at localhost 8080. And here in the Webpack config, you can see that for the resolution for where to find these items, it will look at the React core package. And it will look at the uh, React admin um, UI package. So it will actually look into the packages directory itself versus looking first on uh, in node modules. So if we look at localhost uh, 8080, this is the simple application uh, demo application. And now what we can do is let's say we want to make a change to one of these text fields in here. So I can open up in the React admin repo. I can try and find text field 
um, dot tsx. So this uh, this text field has um, uh, you can see that it is based inside the React admin UI, material UI, source, field, text field, .tsx. And I'm just going to uh, put a placeholder value here just so that I can make sure that any changes that I'm making uh, show up in the, uh, in the application over here. So you can see each one of these was a text field. Um, this one, I'm not sure what this is, so I'm going to inspect it. And inside the React DevTools, um, I can see that this is a, a very, very deep component. Um, we can see that this is also a text field, but that it comes from an enhanced filter form. Um, resettable text field. So, yeah, so let's see, is there a resettable text field? And there does appear to be one. So I'm going to go to the source. And here in the source, uh, there appears to be quite a bit of uh, conditional logic here. Um, let's see if I can just put a sample value here and to see if it rebuilds if yeah so now you can see that sample was placed here so that gives you a quick way of being able to uh, be able to update each of the individual components and see a live render with uh, with webpack in watch mode and then if you want to uh, take some of these changes and put them into your application, you can run make build again and uh, give it a solid uh, minute or more to, uh, to build. And when you want to put it into your own application, so here's React Admin source code, here is our our sample app. Um, in the sample app, we would be able to um, to use Yarn Link to point to a local version of React Admin, and we will uh, we will shut down the incremental build. And we will also shut down the test admin. And in the React admin project, we will go to um, packages and then to React admin. And you can see that. Uh, that we have uh, ESM and LIB. These are the two different ways of, uh, of having these imported into your projects. So instead of uh, doing a yarn add react admin here, which we'll get it from, um, from NPM, um, if we just do a yarn, you can see that was uh, already installed. We will then run a yarn link in this, uh, in this folder where the source was, and then we will do a yarn link react admin here. So if we want to make sure that works, we can list out our node modules, then grep for react admin, and you can see that this is now a sim link to uh, to this directory here. So now that we have it built and we have it linked, we can restart our app and it will use the, uh, the, the version that we just built.
So here you can see that we are getting an invalid hook call and it is likely because we have different versions of React or more than one copy of React in the same app. So in order to fix this, the workaround is to go into your app, into your React directory and run yarn link from here so that this becomes the source of truth for React. And then in the mono repo, run yarn link react here. And then rerun the build. So that way the version of react is the same across both projects. I'm going to cut out about 45 seconds of video so that this seems a lot faster. Okay, so now that that has been built, I'll just make sure that it was uh, put into, oops. Uh, so we'll run yarn in the root. And we'll run yarn start. And we'll give it a chance to build all the files. compiled successfully, and now you can see the customizations that we put into the text field.tsx file as a prefix are now found in our app um, that is consuming the locally built version of React Admin. Thanks for making it through to the end. See you next time.